Last week, when I was browsing Twitter, I came across this tweet, which was talking about the graphical interface of Arch Linux installation called ALG. My jaw dropped on the floor because I never knew it exists. After pulling up my pants and running over to the computer, I found out it is already discontinued. I checked the website. It seems this is a project aimed to make the Arch user's life easier made by a single man. I immediately decided to give it a try because our community needs people like this. So let's jump right in. Before we start, a brief introduction of what it is. It is a project that provides a graphical interface installer for the pure Arch Linux. Although on the ALG website, it doesn't say it is an Arch-based Linux distribution, and this post deliberately says it is not, it is just an installer on top of Arch. I can understand the reasons behind this because it just utilized the GUI tool to install several Arch packages. The tool itself is called Glamorous, which despite being used by a lot of the Arch-based distributions, is an independent project and has the ability to install any other distribution. But from the user's perspective, when compared to Endeavor OS, there is not much of a difference. They both include an in-house theme and a couple of useful tools like Firefox, LibreOffice, and NVIDIA driver can be installed when booting the installer. Yes, there's no denying that Endeavor OS has more applications like the user-friendly welcome app from which you can easily change a lot of things. However, I can't really tell the difference after using it for a while, except missing YAY for installing AUR out of the box, which is not really a big deal. So let's not bog down with if it is a Linux distribution or not and start installing it already. At the time of recording, the website was still up and running. I was able to get the installer myself easily. I remember talking about PC Linux OS in this video regarding their website not looking super modern. ALG, on the other hand, did a pretty good job on the website even though it seems to be created by one single guy. It looks way better than the over 10 year old Linux distribution website. And the effort is more obvious after going to the download page. Not only does it have all the major desktop environments and window managers, KDE Plasma, GNOME, and XFCE all have two separate versions. One themed for people who want to start using the system right away, and one pure version for all the tinkerers who love the freedom. Not only that, it even has a Zen kernel edition. My mind was blown away. I chose the Cinema edition as I became a fan of Mint after the release of version 21. But anyways, hurry up and go get your favorite flavor because the creator said he is considering taking down the website soon. Also, because it is based on Arch and the development has already stopped, if you don't get it now, you will get too old and might break the initial system update after the installation. While booting up the USB, I chose to go with the NVIDIA proprietor driver. Okay, I boot up the installer from the USB and connect it to the internet. And it is right now 8.02 in the evening. Let's see how long does it take for me to install the Arch Linux. Clamora's installer is quite easy to use. Just like installing Endeavor OS, I was able to finish the whole process after choosing the language, time zone, keyboard, format option, and my username password. Now the installation is done, and the time is 20.08. Let's see if it boot up correctly. The first time boot up is correct, and I already have the NVIDIA driver installed by default. Now let me do a system update and see if it breaks. I was actually worrying about this part because ALG has been discontinued for a while and my ISO file was two months old. But it seems only 200 packages need updates and I was happy to see the system was still working after the restart. Now the system update is done and the time is 2013. It took me about 10 minutes with the installation and the system update and the system seems to be working right now. Looking at the desktop, the Cinnamon version has all the essential tools like LibreOffice and Firefox out of the box. It is pre-configured with the Tala Circle theme, Mojave Cursor, and Cugger theme. I didn't give any deeper look after that because it's time to play games. The failed attempt on Endless OS several weeks back 
made me itchy about playing Assassin's Creed, so I decided to give it another try. To give those never used Arch Linux before, here is everything I did. According to Arch Wiki, in order to install Steam, I had to change the Pac-Man config file, which means I need an editor. Nano is pre-installed, but of course I went with my favorite Emacs. After enabling the multi-lib repo, Steam was installed within seconds. Proton Tricks is a bit tricky, but it was not that hard to set up. Go to AUR and clone the repo. Use make pkg-si to install the dependencies along with the installation. You'll break because there were two dependencies needed manual attention. The first one is called Python VDF, which can also be found in AUR. Same process like Proton Tricks. git clone make pkg-si. The other one is WineTricks, which is already in Multilib, so it can be installed directly by using pacman-syu. ProtonTricks installation will pass after that. The rest of the things are pure GUI based. Log into Steam, enable ProtonDB, and install the game. Here, we need to launch the game at least once for ProtonTricks to find it. Then, open up ProtonTricks and select Assassin's Creed. Install Uplay. Logging again here. I have to quit you play once and start a game using Steam again to enjoy the game. After several days of using it, I'm falling in love with Arch Linux again. Although I don't mind setting up Arch system from scratch using Terminal, as it is always fun to try different things each time. I just can't imagine anyone wants to do it over and over. First, it is time consuming, and second, it gets boring after several times in a row. In this regard, I think Nix OS has a better approach than Arch. I can set it up once with a config file, save it somewhere, and use it to set up the exact system going forward. This config file can also be changed over time based on my change of preference, which does happen a lot as a distro hopper. You can find my video for more detail on Nix OS and why I stopped using it here. With Arch, I just couldn't do so. But even though ALG does not provide the benefits with a single configuration file, it definitely solved the time-consuming problem for the pure Arch lovers out there. Well, it did. Not anymore. If it has not been discontinued, I would definitely recommend it for anyone who wants to try pure Arch Linux over Endeavor OS, as it is created by a one-man band and the Linux community needs people like him desperately. I also want to give a shout out to the creator's YouTube channel. In his video when saying goodbye to ALG, he said he had a lot of stress from Arch team not to use the word Arch, and he decided to give it up and start focusing on making YouTube videos. So even though he has a bigger channel than mine, I still encourage people to go check it out. Of course, after hitting the like button for this video and subscribe to my channel. But that is all for this video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.